Welcome everybody to the channel. My name is Zach Moore, and today we're going to write a song together. Ah, I know, you might not know how to read music or play an instrument. No worries. The talk we're going to do today is very easy to understand, down to earth. You're going to learn how to play chords, what notes are, and how to write your own chord structures, and what a chord structure is. It's super easy to understand, and I promise by the end, you will be hopefully writing your own music as well. Okay? If you like what you hear today, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Ring that bell notification down below if you want future updates to any videos to come down the road. And without further ado, let's begin here. So what I have here is a simple C major scale. It's okay if you don't understand anything that I just said. Maybe some of you have heard of Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. If you've watched The Sound of Music, you for sure have heard of that before. It sounds something like this. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. And you'll see right down here uh, that is written in below these notes here. What you see with these notes is a C major scale. It's just going from C to C. And it consists of every single letter happening in the musical alphabet without flats or sharps. So C, D, E, F, G. And it starts over again at then A, B, and then C. Okay. Now, I want you to imagine if we were to replace Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do with numbers. Okay. So Do becomes 1, Re, 2, Mi, 3, and so on and so forth. We have this then. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and back to one. Super simple. Now I want you just to hang on to the information, put it off to the side for just a moment here. We need to talk about chords and how to make a basic triad on the piano, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on making a triad based off of this C note happening right here, okay? So... What I did here is I extracted that C note, and next to it, you'll see a basic, what we call a triad chord, written right next to it. The way that we basically do a chord is we play a note, skip a note, play a note, skip a note, and play a note. Now, I have a different image that will help show that a little bit more on the piano. So here's a piano, and this key right here is a C. OK, uh, if you have no idea how to read a piano, let me just give you a real basic piece of advice. Uh, so if you imagine that these two black keys here are a doghouse, the thing that's laying inside the doghouse, this white note right here, is D. So D is always inside the doghouse. OK, so we can find D happening right here again. Here's our doghouse and here's D. OK, so here we go. We have C, D, E. F, G, A, B, C, and so on and so forth. To play a C chord, like I showed you before, so play a note, skip a note, play a note, skip a note, play a note, we have play a note, skip a note, play a note, skip a note, and then play a note. So all together we have a C chord. Okay? And if you just keep that same exact formation and move it to a different note, so let's say D now, if I play a D, skip the E, play the F, skip the G, play the A, we get a D minor triad. Okay, don't worry about major or minor for now, just ignore that. All we need to focus on is that wherever we slide that formation will be a chord. Okay? So now, going back to our scale that we had before, where we, where we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Imagine that we played a note, skipped a note, played a note, skipped a note, played a note, over the top of each of these notes right here. We would get something that looks like this. Okay? So we have the bottom note remaining the same, and we have that formation simply just shifting up to either be on lines because it's playing notes, skipping a note, playing a note, skipping a note, playing a note, 
or on spaces because it's playing a note, skipping a note, playing a note, skipping a note, playing a note. Okay? Hopefully you're following along so far. Now, you'll notice that we got rid of the C, D, E, F, G here. That is because when we're talking about chords in music, specifically music theory, we typically use Roman numerals to talk about chords. So if you can't read Roman, Roman, Roman numerals, good lord, I have still included the numbers down below. These numbers do correspond with the Roman numeral showing, okay? Just a quick basic lesson about Roman numerals. A V equals 5 and an I equals 1, okay? Ignore uppercase and lowercase for now. I'll talk about that in a moment. So V and an I afterward means that you're adding a 1 to it. So we have 5 plus 1 equals 6, okay? Or 5 plus 1 plus 1 equals 7. If the I happens before the V, you're subtracting 1, okay? So 5 minus 1 is 4. And then just I is alone, so 1, 2 I's is 2, 3 I's is 3. It's just that simple. Now, the uppercase I means that it's a major chord. Major chords sound like this. If it's lowercase, it's, it's minor. And minor chords sound like this. Major, minor, major, minor. Okay? Now the last thing that you should understand is that this little circle here simply just means that it's a diminished chord, which is a different type of chord. Okay, so if I play, uh, here's a major chord. Here's a minor chord. And here's a diminished chord. I always felt like diminished chords sound like that person from old cartoons being tied to railroad tracks, you know? You know, you can see the evil person with the top hat tying the person to the railroad tracks. Um, so that's a diminished chord. Now, okay, what do we do with these Roman numerals? These different chords, the one chord, the two chord, three chord, four, five, what do we do with that? Well, we apply it to something called a chord flowchart, which looks like this. We have a major version and a minor version. Uh, we're going to focus today on the major version. So hopefully all of these Roman numerals are kind of making sense to you. So the one chord is based off of Do, 2 is Re, and 3 Mi, and so on and so forth. Now all you're going to do is simply just follow these arrows to whatever chord it's pointing to, and it should sound good. Now there's reasons as to why th this flowchart works, and we could get way more in depth about that down the road, but for today, we're just going to focus on following the arrows. Now, there's only one arrow that is a little weird and confusing, and it's this odd one off to the right side of this number one Roman numeral. This arrow means that the one chord can go to any of these chords. It is up to you. It doesn't matter. It's like the queen in chess. The queen in chess can go forward, backward, side to side, or or diagonally. Doesn't really matter. So if I choose to go to from a one chord to a two chord, I can. Or to a three chord. Or to a six chord. However, let's say I'm at the three chord here. With the three chord, you only have one option. You have an arrow pointing directly to this Roman numeral six. It does not allow you to jump everywhere like the one chord. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Just take it super literally, follow the arrows that are on the chart, okay? So, for example, if I start with this one chord, so, and I decide to go then to the sixth chord, I follow this arrow right here, and I have the option to go to any of these two chords within these brackets. I'm going to choose to go to the four chord. Now, from the four chord, once again, I follow the arrows, and I can choose to go to either of these two chords within the brackets. I'm going to go to the five chord. And from the five chord, I can choose to go back to one, which I am going to. Okay? It's just that simple. Now, let's move on and talk a little bit about something called cadences. Cadences are essentially, essentially the punctuation to music. 
Okay, think about what a comma does to a sentence or a period does to a sentence. It lets you know that either with a comma, there's more to be said, or with a period, that's the end of a thought, and we're moving on to the next statement. Same thing in music. When I played that chord structure for you, the one to the six, to the four, to the five, hopefully this ending sounds like a musical period to you. We returned back to one, which really feels like home to us, okay? And those periods, don't refer to them as periods because periods mean something totally different in music. But if we think about it as the end of a musical phrase, you have two options to make a song sort of sound like the end of a song. Okay. I mean, there's plenty of other options, but two basic options are either plagal cadence or this perfect cadence. You'll notice that both of them end with one. With a plagal cadence, you go from a four to a one. Plagal cadences are sort of tied to that amen type of sound from church services. You know, the... Amen to the feel, okay? So that's the plagal cadence. Perfect cadences sound like this. Okay. Now, half cadences. Half cadences are kind of like commas, um, as well as deceptive cadences, because they don't really go back to home, it tells you that there's more to come. Half cadences end on a five chord. So if I go a one chord to a two chord to a four chord and a five chord and I end right there and I start moving on to another part in the music. Clearly ending there doesn't feel like home. It tells the ear or the listener that there is more to come. The deceptive cadences are similar except it doesn't end on five instead of going from five to one. One, which feels like home, it deceives our ears. Instead of going back to one, which it really wants to, it goes to a six and tells you that there is more to come. Like, aha, it's not done yet. And so that's a little bit about cadences. Now, let's put those chords together. Let's put those cadences together and build our very own chord structure. So these chord structures... How do we do this? Before you freak out about putting chords on these empty blanks and think, how, where do I even begin? What we're going to do is we're going to begin with the cadences. Cadences will automatically take out half of the chords that we need to worry about. Okay. Um, we're, and what we're going to do is we're going to do um, two four bar phrases. What that means is um, the, each one of these is one uh, is a one bar phrase. So one measure of music. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, four bar phrases. Okay. So we're going to focus on cadences. What I did is I put in the, uh, five chord going to the sixth chord. So we have a deceptive cadence and we're ending with a perfect cadence, a five chord to a one chord. Now you'll see that I put in a one chord to start off the entire, um, chord structure. Why did I do that? Because in pop music, or tonal music, it's important to establish where do is. Okay, do is tells us uh, where home is, and it lets the listener know when we're away from home and when we expect to be home. So, it, by starting with that one chord, and I go to a five chord, we already heard that one chord, so we know that that is home, and then it thus feels like home. Now, all we need to do is we need to fill in these blanks with possible options. Okay, so how do we do that? It's kind of like working backwards. Because the one chord can go to any chord, we don't really need to worry about what chord to go to. What we do need to worry about though, worry about though, is what chord can go to a five chord. Because I can't go, choose to go to a three chord from a one chord. I mean, I can go to a three chord, but once we go to that three chord, we're in trouble because the three chord can't go all the way to this five chord. So we have to look what's before the five chord. Well, we have three options. We can either go to the seven chord, because as you can see, the arrows here are showing that a seven chord can go to a five chord, or we can go from the, this four chord to a five chord, or this two chord to a five chord. What I chose to do was I went to the two chord. I went one, two, five, and I took this arrow and went back to six. Okay. And you might 
notice that these arrows are new from before. Um, it's because they reflect a chord flow chart that I used with my students and it gives us more options. Uh, so this is the one we're using. Anyways, I digress. Five chord to the sixth chord. Now a sixth chord, you'll see from here to here, I chose to go to the four chord. From the four chord, I needed to find a chord that could lead to a five chord because we need to fill in this empty space here, right? I mean, it's, imagine it's empty, okay? So I chose to go to the two chord and then to the five chord. However, there is another option. If you were thinking that you wanted to go from the four chord to the seventh chord and then to the five chord, that would be perfectly fine too. You could even technically stay on the four chord and do it twice in a row if you wanted to. I wouldn't recommend it because it gets kind of boring. I mean, the music isn't doing anything. You're just staying on the same chord. Um, but it is an option if you wanted to. So anyways, I went from the four chord to the two chord to the five chord and then perfect cadenced back to the one chord. Off to the side here, I just put down the letters so you could see how they translate from Roman numerals to letters. So we have a C chord going to the two chord or D minor to the five chord G major to the sixth chord A minor to the four chord F major back to the two chord D minor to the five chord G major and back to the one chord on a perfect cadence to C major. Okay. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to simply, I'm going to simply compose for you on the spot a song using our chord structure that we just created. And just to show you up in this corner, I know it's kind of small. I included a little piano for you to see me playing the chords. And you'll notice that the notes that I'm playing are all used in our one chord. So C, G, C, E, G. It's all using those C chords, okay? So without further ado, here we go. Back to that four chord, to our two chord, to our five chord, and back to the one. Just like that, we're already starting to compose. This is kind of like the Bob Ross experience, but with music. Okay, just making sure that's all nice and pretty. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to the electric guitar. Once again, I'm only going to be using the notes within my chords. You can use whatever notes you choose to use. I'm just doing whatever on the spot using the notes in the chords. So here we go, electric guitar. C major, D minor, to G, A minor, F major, D minor, G major, C. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to tidy up these notes really quickly. And we're going to move on now to staccato strings, okay? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to play the basic notes to our chords. So if it's a C major chord, I'm going to play the C. If it's a D major chord, I'm going to play a D, okay? And I'm just going to play it rhythmically. So being sure that strong beats happen on beat one and sometimes on beat three as well. So here we go. Our one chord, C. G to that A minor chord to that F chord to our D chord to our G chord to our C and you'll notice I added a little bit of a note change at the end there that's because I'm leading into the second half of our song which I pre-composed just to save on some time um, but uh, just so you're aware now I'm going to start adding some percussion. I'm going to simply just um, follow a little bit what I did with the staccato strings, embellish it a little bit, but just kind of, just like I'm playing a drum set or, you know, beatboxing, just think basic percussion. So here we go. Once 
once again, we're going to tidy up those notes to be a little bit cleaner and more accurate. And let's go on to, we're going to start working on the ending that's going to lead into our, our uh, second half here. So let's add some more percussion. Okay, super simple. Clean that up one more time. And we're going to go to a low bass now. Sounds like this. Once again, just keeping uh, keeping true to the strong beats one and three of a 4-4 four, four measure. Clean that up one more time as well. <clears throat> and we're going to add a low bass drum roll. It'll be super subtle, but here we go. Okay, good enough. We're going to add a cymbal roll. Let's make sure I'm on the right chord here. Oh. There we go. Okay. And just like that, we have our chord structure already sounding like music, okay? Let's take a listen to our chord structure and see how it sounds alone. Okay, now we can see that's starting to lead to something there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide over this existing music to align with what we have happening already. And let's take a listen to the final product. And there is our very basic chord structure. Uh, like I said, what I really enjoy about this lesson is that it is very basic. It's a shallow view of what composing is, but it's a great introduction to get people's feet wet and to try out music making. Hopefully you feel that you could write a song and I highly encourage you to try writing a song, especially if you have a piano or some type of musical instrument, guitar, whatever, give it a shot. It's really fulfilling and it's a great way to kind of heal the soul a little bit. The beautiful thing about writing music is you don't have to be at a fancy LA studio to do it. You don't really need all the fancy equipment like what I'm using right now. As long as you just have a way to make the music, it can happen. It's just a matter of if you're deciding to be daring enough to try it out or if you're still deciding that you can't do it which at this point hopefully you realize that you can do it and anyone can do it i hope this inspires you to try writing your own music if you have any questions please feel free to comment down below i hope you enjoyed today's video and once again if you like what you heard today be sure to like and share subscribe hit that bell notification for any future videos to come thank you again for listening and have a wonderful day Bye, everybody.